Al-Imam Ahmed reported in his Musnad and it was classified as authentic by Al-Albani a story of a woman by the name of Khawla bint Thalaba. This woman came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after an incident, a dispute took place between her and her husband. She married her husband at an, uh, an old age. He was older, much older than her and became hot-tempered. She said he entered the house and we had an argument about something and he then said, Anti ummi. You are as haram to me as my mother, which is called in, in Islam, al-dhihar. She said then he left and then came back and wanted to have a relationship with me, I said, no, by Allah, you will not touch me after what you had said. I will take my matter to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she entered to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Aisha tells us, Radiallahu Anha. She was in the same room. She said, the only thing separating me from them, her and the Prophet ﷺ, was a curtain. And she told him what happened. And he said, لا أرى إلا أنك قد حرمت عليه. The only thing I see, or I can say is that you are forbidding for him as a wife now. She said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we have children. If he leaves them to me, they will go hungry. And if they go with him, they will be wasted. He's old. And he was saying, La ara illa annaki qad harumti alayhi. You are forbidding for him. She said, O oh, Messenger of Allah. He took me young and now after I produced children for him and became old, how can I go without him? And he's repeating, لا أرى إلا أنك قد حرمت عليه. And at every time she would raise her head and say, Allahumma inni ashku ilayk. Allahumma inni ashku ilayk. Oh Allah, I complain to you. She's in a disaster. And the Messenger وسلم, is not giving her any solution because he does not have revelation pertaining to this case. So he cannot say anything other than what he knows. Which is the principle of the matter. And that is, she's forbidding. She's not a wife anymore. He cannot touch her. They cannot go back as a husband and wife. Aisha radiallahu anha says, Tabarak al-ladhi wasi'a sam'uhu kulla shay. Glory be to the one whose hearing encompassed everything. When she was arguing with the Prophet sallallahu and complaining to Allah, Allah immediately revealed, Qad sami'a Allahu qawla allati tujadiluka fi zawjiha wa tashtaki ila Allah. Allah has heard the speech of that woman who is arguing with you about her husband and complain to Allah. And Allah hears your dialogue. Glory and praise be to the one whose hearing has encompassed everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The name of Allah, as samir the all-hearing, is today's khutbah. As samir is an intensive form of the word 
hearing. He is an all. He's all hearing. His he, his his hearing encompassed everything. Subhanahu wa taala. His hearing is not like any other hearing. Laysa kamithlihi shay. There is nothing like him. Nothing resembles Allah Azza wa Jal. His hearing is perfect. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal hears all sounds and all voices at the same time. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Azza wa Jal said, it's a Qudsi narration. Ya ibadi, O oh my slaves, law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum. If the first of you, those who existed since the beginning of time, wa akhirakum, the, the last of you, those who will exist until the end of time, insakum wa jinnakum, humans and jinn. All rise up at one place. And each ask of me his need. I want you to imagine this. All people from the time of Adam until the end of time. Jinn and humans rise up in one go, each asking in his own language. At the same time, Allah will hear them all and will give all what they ask for. فَأَعْطَيْتُ كُلُّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْكُمْ مَسْأَلَتَهُ and I give each of you what he is asking of me. What type of hearing is this? What type of presence is this? Allah Azza wa does not get mixed up or confused with them when there are too many voices and sounds. He hears them all as if they're all one. And he does not get preoccupied with one and thus is not unable to hear the rest. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a matter of fact, even if it was something that is concealed, he still hears it. Sawa'un minkum. Man asarra al qawla wa man jahra bih. It is the same to him concerning you whether one of you conceals his speech or publicizes it. As a matter of fact, Allah Azza wa Jal hears what humans can never hear, what others cannot hear. He hears the whispers of shaitan to you and me while we cannot hear that. وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ And if Satan whispers to you an evil, then seek refuge with Allah, for He is all hearing, all knowing. Beautiful name. And this name has two meanings. The normal hearing and hearing with the meaning of response. As the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al Albani. In his dua, he used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. اللهم إني أعوذ بك من قلب لا يخشع ودعاء لا يسمع. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from a heart that does not submit 
and from a dua that is not heard, meaning that is not responded to. This is a, a really beautiful name of the names of Allah Azzawajal. And there are many benefits from learning and understanding and believing in this name. Which we will address in the second khutbah. One of the beautiful fruits of learning, knowing, and believing in the name of Allah, as Sami' the all hearing, is that it motivates and encourages the person to frequently supplicate Allah. When you know that Allah is all hearing and you believe that Allah is all hearing, you will raise your hands. You will address Him with your needs. When you're uh, suffering, when you're distressed, you know that He'll hear you, so you call upon Him. Is he not best? The one who responds to the distressed and relieves the difficulty or the hardship. Allah Azza wa Jal heard the call of Yunus alayhi salatu wassalam when he is in the middle of darknesses upon darknesses when the whale or that big fish swallowed him and he was in the darkness of its belly in the darkness of the ocean in the darkness of the night he called upon Allah La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al none is worthy of worship but you glory be to you indeed I was amongst the wrongdoers, what was the result? We responded to him and we relieved him from his anxiety and difficulty. So when life becomes dark, when things become gloomy, call upon Allah. La ilaha illa anta subhanak. Inni kuntu min al the Prophet وسلم, said, and this is reported by Al Imam Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, These words, the dua of the noon of Yunus, never would a believing or a Muslim man or woman supplicate Allah about anything using these words except that Allah would respond for him or to him. Don't give up hope. Allah is all hearing. You're distressed, call upon him. You're grieved, call upon him. You're in a difficulty, call upon him. He does not get tired from responding to you. And he will hear you. He will take care of you. Just call upon him with certainty. With a heedful heart, not a heedless one. With a present mind, not an absent mind. Call upon him. He will get you out of your difficulty. Another issue is that it makes a person indifferent when he's calling upon Allah Azza wa Jal, whether he raises his voice or calls upon him to himself secretly in a soft voice. In the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, Abu Musa Al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu said, we were on a, on a journey with the Prophet And some of us were mentioning Allah and some said supplicating Allah aloud. So the Prophet وسلم, said, Ya ayyuha nas irba'u ala anfusikum. O oh people, don't supplicate aloud. For you are not calling upon a deaf 
or an absent Lord, indeed, your Lord is all hearing. When Zakaria called upon Allah Azza wa Jal, asking him for a son, Allah described the way he called upon Allah, saying, إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيَّةً He called upon his Lord privately in secret. What was the result? فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ We gave him glad tidings with a son, Yahya. Yahya was the result of that private, secret call, supplication from Zakaria to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal likes that we do that. And you know why? Because it embodies our belief in Him being all hearing. When I believe that Allah is all hearing, so I don't have to raise my voice, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, no. And some of the scholars said, it is closer to sincerity when you call upon Allah secretly between you and yourself. And finally, and with this I conclude, when one believes and knows that Allah is all hearing, regardless of the time or the place, that will make him refrain from saying things that displease Allah Azza wa Jal. For those naive people who think that when they call someone a girl or a boy, a woman or a man, with whom they're not allowed Islamically to talk and keep a soft tone, thinking that no one can hear them, it is the same to him, whether you say it concealed, soft, behind doors, or publicize it in the open, it is the same to him. When you know that Allah is all hearing, you will not be daring in backbiting and tail bearing. When you know that Allah is all hearing, you will not, you will refrain, or at least you should. Cursing people, bad-mouthing people, especially those loved ones, like the wife and the husband, you will not be abusive to your children with the vocab that you use. Because you know that Allah is hearing that. And that displeases him, and thus you will refrain. Allahumma.